thanks everybody for taking time out to join our live webinar going over the new features in Boulevard 2020 and some other areas of the program. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first area that we're going to cover is the views in Boulevard and how it relates to the new toolbars. Now the new toolbars are great in the fact that they all now have text so you know exactly what they're going to do and you can hover over them and they'll give you even more additional information. This is also helpful if you have a touch screen because some of these buttons are now larger as well. The different views in Boulevard are tab view, tile view, and float. My screen right now is in float mode, which means each time I open either the customer list or product list, any of the areas in Boulevard, they're going to float. Now another option to put my window mode in would be the tabbed view. Now the tab view makes it look like they are similar to web pages and I can click each one to open or access that tab. Similar to web pages, the more windows you have open, the slower performance that you will experience. So it's best to try not to have too many tabs open at one time. The tab view is actually designed for smaller screens. So the screen that I'm displaying this webinar on is a fairly large wide monitor so I have a lot of space but if you have a smaller screen the tab view may be a good option for you. The last option for different types of views is the tile view and the tile view is uh, meant for multitasking so for example if I want to have the unit list open and then maybe I also want to see production if I'm in the tile view what that's going to do is arrange the open forms or open screens to utilize all the space in Boulevard and if I open another screen it will then readjust. So for example, I have the production screen and I also have the unit list up so it's taking up that space. And if I click the top of either screen, it will change position. But if I want to open, for example, the customer list as well, it will reshift so that all of my open screens are taking up all of the open space. Now, if I can't find a screen or I've clicked a button and I don't see that it's doing anything, so I'm not sure what's going on, the best way to handle that is to go to your window menu in Boulevard and either choose close all, so it closes all your open windows. You'll also see here below this shows all of your open windows or if I hit cascade what that's going to do is it's going to put all of my open windows in a cascade format so that I can easily see which forms or screens I have open. What I can do at that point is either close the screens that I don't need or I can resize them and move them around. So this puts me in a float mode and if I hover my mouse at the edge of any of the screens you'll see that it turns into a double headed arrow and I can drag it and change the size of the screen that I'm working in. Now, if I want Boulevard to remember the sizes of the screens, that, the way I make them, and the placement of the screens, what you'll want to make sure that you do is go to the Window menu and choose Recall Open Forms. When I choose this option, the next time I open Boulevard, 
any of the forms or screens that I have open and where they're located will all open in the same exact spot. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the toolbars. Now, if you have a smaller screen and you want to utilize the space and not take up all of the space with the toolbars, you can choose to hide any toolbars that you're not using. For example, the main toolbar, if I hit Control F1, what that's going to do is temporarily hide that toolbar. I can either choose Control F1 again to reopen it, or the next time I reopen the program, if I close and reopen it, that toolbar will display again. Another button that is very useful is the clear filters. The clear filters button will clear any filters that you have set, whether it's inactives on the customer list, whether you have your product list open and maybe you've set filters here, you can click clear filters. So this is a great way to make sure that you're seeing all the information and nothing is hidden. So clear filters. Now since I have the product list open, what I'd like to go over is another couple of buttons um, on the toolbar, and that is the collapse and expand. You'll notice that I personally keep my product list collapsed. So what that does is it allows me to see all of the categories, and if I'm looking for a particular product, what it's going to do is it's going to expand the categories that have the item that I'm looking for. So for example, I'm going to search by a partial description, and I'm typing serum. So what that's going to do is it expanded all of the categories that have anything with the word serum in it. Now this also works if you do a partial part number. So for example, if I type Let's say I type the 855. What it's going to do is it's going to pull up any part number that has those digits in it. So this find field is very powerful. It allows you to search by partial description or partial part number. And if I choose that I want to view all of my products again, just click clear and you can expand your product list to see them all, or again, choose Collapse. I'm going to go back to the Tile mode for a moment. Again, under the Window menu, I'm choosing Arrange, and then Tile. And what I'm going to cover now is we've talked about this in a previous webinar, but I wanted to briefly touch on it um, because of the fact that new foundations are being released. The mat is already released, 3D Foundation and Luminous will be released soon as well. So what you can do with the product list is with the view, click the button to select the drop-down, and then go Usage by Customer. And now I want to filter. So I'm going to click Filter, and you'll notice that there's a date range that pops up. I'm going to change that to All Dates. You have a lot of options, but I'm going to choose All Dates. And then I'm going to go down to Product Line, and I'm going to choose TimeWise Luminous Wear. Once I click OK, this is going to show me all of the customers that have purchased any Luminous Wear from me in the past. And what I can do now is I can create a list builder list. Now this is where the tile mode actually is great for this. So I'm going to select the checkbox header so that it selects everyone. Then I'm going to go ahead and choose List Builder. 
and I'm going to create a new list. Now, if I already had a, an existing list that I wanted to add to, I could have chosen existing list, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new list. and click OK. And when I say yes to view the list builder, now I can see the Luminous customers here, but I can still see the customer list here as well. So I can go ahead and clear any filters. I can go back to my default view. Whatever I want to do with the product list, it's still available, but I have my list builder list. Now I can create an email based on this. I can print a report to see who my Luminous Wear customers to follow up and call them. If you send out a group email in Boulevard, it will actually put a note in their profile that you sent an email. So for example, I've already done this with the Matware customers. And if I go ahead and open and then go ahead and go to the contact log, you'll see that I sent an email and it shows in here the email that I sent. Now it's just going to be the subject line. If you have Boulevard set up to send out emails, there is an option that you can have it CC you so you actually get a copy of the email and you can refer back to that. So that's one way that the tile view is helpful to have all of the windows open. Now you'll notice that the profile, even in tile mode, floats. And that's done on purpose so that you can move that around without it affecting the tile behind. I'm going to go ahead and close all my screens and open the customer list back up. And let's go back to float mode and just play around with it and decide what you what works best for you and so now let's go ahead and talk about the profile so we have put button groups together and you'll notice that throughout the program with the toolbars that are grouped similarly and if you, again if you hover over any of the buttons it's going to tell you what it will um, accomplish now some of these button groups are collapsed so you'd have to click on it and it will open up different options now one of the functions that we changed in Boulevard 2020 that many people don't even realize is we actually phased out the skincare profile. And the reason why we did that was um, a couple of reasons actually. The skincare profile changes continuously and we want to make sure that you don't have to wait for us to come out with an update to change the skincare profile. The other reason is that once you entered the information into the skincare profile, it did nothing else. You could refer back to it, but you couldn't run any reports off of it. You couldn't do any filtering. So what we've recommended in the meantime is actually utilizing the checklist feature. Now, the checklist feature you can set up by going to the settings button and then choose checklist. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the steps on setting up the checklist. There is instructions on how to do that. Once you've set up your checklist, then you can open up anyone's profile and you'll see under their checklist tab, they'll have everything that you've set up. So you can use this not only for different tasks, but anything that you do with your customers typically or consultants and add it under the checklist. So for example, I have first purchase bonus given. So if I give a bonus when they purchase like an, a reward amount, 
if you have a reward program set up, you can check that and when you do that, it's going to make a note in their contact log here, but what it's also going to do is it will add the points to their account and which then they can use with your rewards program. But what you can also do if you notice at the bottom and at the back of your webinar handout is create your own skincare profile checklist. So you can check off when they've filled out the profile and fill out their preferences here. And by doing this, then I can actually filter on whether or not certain things are checked or not, certain checklist tasks. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and close this profile and I'm going to go back to my filter. Now this is my customer list, but it works the same on the unit list and the address list. And when I click the filter, I'm going to go down to the checklist drop down and anything that I've added to the checklist, I can now filter on. So I can filter based on tasks like facial given, or I can see, okay, based on their profile, that the choices that they made, who all prefers the luminous foundation finish? And when I click OK, it's going to filter based on that setting that I have checked in their profile. Now again, I can utilize this information and print it as a report. I can utilize this information and send an email to these customers. There's many things I can do. I can create a list builder list based on that. And when I'm finished, I can click clear filters again. Now I'm going to go back into Lucy Bonderson's profile. Now, if you want to be more specific than just the basic profile, skincare profile information, that's where we suggest utilizing this formulas area. And the great thing about the formulas area is as products change, you can change the information that is displayed as well. Maybe I have a different mask set in here. I can actually add more options and then choose that. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. Now while we're in the profile, I'm actually going to create an invoice. And again, new is a regular invoice. Historical does not remove any products from your on-hand amount. So I'm going to choose new. And another change to Boulevard 2020 is the product history. So click the look up button if you want to see their past purchase history. And I can move this around and change the size. And what it's going to do is it's going to default to their product history. What you can also do is if you notice when I hover over the columns, they highlight. That means that I can actually click on them and it will sort by that group type or by that column header. So for example, if I want to go down and I want to see different eye colors, then I've sorted by eye color and I can go here and then just double click to bring over whatever product they are reordering. So let's go ahead and just click and there is an item can also choose to view all of the products from the product list here or again as always you can do a partial description search or part number search as well. Now another feature that has been very well received, it's a huge time saver is the editing of on-hand amounts. Now this is a perfect example of when I would want to expand all of my product categories so I see everything. And what you can do is go down the line and choose to change any of 
the on hand amounts. Now, before you do this, you want to make sure that you have your default wholesale amount set first. Now, I've already done that, but I'm going to go in and show you where you go. So you'd click orders. That's going to open up your order screen. And then I'm going to go to settings. And just make sure that your default discount is set here because that's what Boulevard's going to use when you change your um, amounts on your product list. So let's go ahead and go back to the product list. And I can go in here and just make changes right down the line, just like that. And it's going to use that default wholesale amount to update the cost of goods for each of those items. Now, as you have questions about any of this, we absolutely love when you come to chat and allow us to walk you through doing different features or functions in Boulevard. And an easy way to be able to be in Boulevard and chat with us at the same time is to pop out your chat box. So I'm going to show you how to easily move your Boulevard screen. So what you would do is click on the header. You'll notice that my mouse is in the upper right corner. Click it and then drag it so that you make your Boulevard screen smaller. And again, utilize the double arrow to make it smaller. And you'll notice when I did that, these collapsed. So there, the information buttons are still there. It's just collapsed so that it reserves space. And then you can just resize your boulevard and move it around to where you can chat with us while we're walking you through step by step. Last area in boulevard that is so extremely important is the backups. So taking backups, as we know, is so important because at one point in time or another, the odds are you're going to have computer issues. And knowing that if you have a Boulevard backup, you can easily go in and install on any computer and restore your backup and you're up and running again. So the different options for backing up is under the edit menu and then preferences and if I go to backup then I'll see prompt every now prompt every deals with taking manual backups so if you want to be prompted to take a manual backup then you'll want to ensure that you check the prompt every and then set the every, amount of days in between uh, being notified and if you do the backup on exit that is the automatic function and by default this location is blank and if it's blank in your boulevard then what that means is that it's actually backing up to your documents folder and I have my documents folder up here inside your documents folder you're gonna see a boulevard folder if you open that boulevard folder this is where all of your backup files are being stored if this location here is blank now again that is still backing up to your hard drive. So if you were to have any sort of computer issues and your computer crashed and you didn't have access to it, having it back up to your hard drive isn't the best option. It's the default option, but we actually recommend using something cloud-based or an external drive, um, one of those two um, options and then you choose how many files you want to keep so what this means is after I have stored 20 backup files the next time that I have Boulevard automatically back up it's going to overwrite the oldest backup that I have saved 
and you can choose whether Boulevard prompts you or not. So when you close Boulevard, if you don't want Boulevard to ask you, do you want to take a backup, and you just want Boulevard to do it, then you'd want to uncheck this. Most people have this checked just so that they are prompted especially if you're opening and closing Boulevard frequently. And that does bring me to the next quick topic, and that is if you're not actively working in your Boulevard program, it's best to keep it closed. The reason is is because if a third-party software or uh, Microsoft does a Windows update. If you have Boulevard open, Boulevard is a two-part program. So you have the shell of the program, which is the features and functions, all of this. But then you have the data inside it, which is the products and your product list, your customers and their purchase history. All of that is data. And if a Windows update were to install, some of them are absolutely fine. You don't even notice that a Windows update occurred. Some are major, and those major ones at times can cause corruption if your program is open. So that's why we always recommend, again, if you're not actively working in your Boulevard, go ahead and close it. The other reason why it's important is because you'll notice that with the very end of Boulevard 2019 and fully with Boulevard 2020 is now we automatically install the software for you or prompt you so that you can choose whether you want to install it. And for Boulevard to be able to prompt you to install, you need to make sure that it's closed. Now we do give you the option to not install it. You can just say open Boulevard and it'll open without installing and go on your merry way. And that actually is beneficial. For example, we launched Boulevard 2020 at the beginning of June. Well, that's also seminar year end. That might not be the best time to learn a brand new software. And even though Boulevard 2020 is very intuitive as far as the buttons. Any kind of new software can be overwhelming, especially when you're at crunch time. So we recommend that at seminar year end, if you do not want to install the new version until the beginning of July when you have time, then absolutely just say open Boulevard. You can choose to install at your, your leisure. Also, we always post on our support site the features that are included not only in the new version but also any fixes that we apply to the version that you have installed. Now you can access it by going to shortcuts. You'll notice that I have my shortcuts collapsed just so that it saves space and you can access these shortcuts from the window menu if you go to shortcuts to open it. And the way I have it collapsed is this little teeny button here. Now if I wanted to have it always stay open, I would click it, but I like mine collapsed. So I just hover over it and then I can choose settings and help and what's new. Now when I click what's new, that's going to launch our support center website and you'll see the um, different features that are included in that version plus this is the most important you'll also see service release information so if I go ahead and click on that I can view all of the fixes and enhancements that are included and when that new service release was posted now I'm going to go ahead and we have about 25 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and open it up so that we have plenty of time to get through some questions. Um, I have a question regarding um, like inventory. Um, I had asked about, you know, having changes in inventory and Trisha had suggested that I take my inventory like as of right now and then um, what I wanted to know is if I'm off and I remember that I re, um, forgot to put in an invoice for something, that I would hit historic 
but what happens if I can't remember, like, if I have, like, 10 of something, and I know that, you know, I sold one or did something with it, what do I do with that? If you don't know who you sold it to, but you do know that you sold it, and if your inventory is accurate to where you don't want to change your on-hand amounts, then right. what we would recommend is either invoice your house account if you have a house account or a guest checkout. Um, that's basically like the house account. It's an anonymous customer. And yes, go ahead and create it as a historical so that it does not change your current on hand amounts, but it does record the sale so that it is um, in your tax reports for the gross receipts. Yeah, because if I don't put that in, then my sales will be off at the end of the year, right? Correct, correct. Okay. So then I can create, if I can't remember if I did it for like um, business supplies or personal use or something like that, I can create a file for that then? Well, now personal use and business supplies, that's a little bit different. Okay. Um, Business supplies are that customer is used for specifically for business related um, expenses and being pulling out inventory for that. Um, and what you'd want to do is if it's something that you know for sure it was for charity or if it was expired product or you pulled it off yourself to use um, as a section a section one demonstrator, so um, for mm -hmm. classes or what have you, then that's where you'd want to put under business supplies. Now, personal use, that is different. That goes under your profile and yep. it's not a write-off, but the business supplies, if it's a demo, et cetera, that is a write-off. So that's why you want to make sure that you differentiate between the two. Was it a personal use item? Was it a business-related item? Or was it a sale to a customer? But gosh, I just don't remember who it was because it was so long ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. I can see where you really have to track that or you could be really off in sales yes. at the end of the year. Yes. Um, I just had a, a suggestion on the backup. I uh, use a flash drive, and because when we have to um, go take shelter for tornadoes, I get the flash drive, and just it's real easy to put in my purse and have it there, and I know it's there. So it's just a, a a security blanket kind of thing. Sure. So that's just a suggestion for people to do it that way. You were talking about the backups. So anyway. Absolutely. Now that does, that. that's a good point. If you are doing a manual backup, I wouldn't recommend using the automatic backup to a flash drive. And the reason is, is because if you pull the flash drive out of your computer and you shut down Boulevard, Boulevard's going to be confused and try to back up to the flash drive, but the flash drive isn't there. So. so if you're taking a manual backup to a flash drive, the other thing that you want to make sure that you do is a lot of times um, where people get tripped up on is just like I started to do I did file and backup don't automatically hit save make sure that you change the save in because it's going to default to that same documents boulevard you would actually want to change it to your flash drive now everybody uses right. flash drive just make sure that you periodically check it because flash drives are like computers they are hardware and they can fail as well um, they don't last forever either so definitely um, want to check those as well um i have a question um i noticed on the product list and i think the customer list you had a little, um, you have a search bar right there. Yes. Mine does not have that, and I can't figure out how to get it. That is a great question. So what you can do is any of these column headers, if you hover on it, just right-click, and you would choose Find Panel. Now, mine's already showing, so it says Hide It, so that's how I would hide it. But if yours looks like this, just right click and say show find panel. This little find feature here is amazing. 
And so I showed you on the product list how it's used, but look how it works on the customer list. So maybe I know just a part of somebody's name. I can just type the first couple letters and it's going to drill down and show me their name. Yes, uh, thank you. I, yeah. um, I, it was there before and I couldn't find it on the new version. Thank you. You're welcome. A question. I would like to know how do I change the tax rate? For all customers. Okay. So what you would do is you'd go into the preferences, which is under the edit menu and preferences. Or in Boulevard 2020, we've also added a preferences button right onto the toolbar so you can access some of the preference functions quickly. So you would do preferences. So if I change it there, if I change it there, then it's going to change it for all of the exactly. Uh, now, what it won't do is if you've set a specific tax rate on a customer's profile at the profile level, it's not going to, it won't change that because the profile level overrides this. But you would change it here. And, a, and one of the new features of Boulevard 2020 is adding a, another digit here. So um, for uh, states, I know specifically New Mexico um, has four digits. We've added that. But this will change it globally. And if you have specific customers that you've changed on their profile, you would need to go into their profile and go under the utilities button and choose settings and then either change it here manually or just check use preferences and if you check use preferences then it's going to go back to the default and when you invoice her it will use whatever you have set in preferences how can i um when i go into a um account for a customer i always have to scroll down because i can't see like if i want to pay for um an order how is there a way of making the screen smaller so that I don't have to scroll down every single time that I have to mark the order as paid? So are you in an invoice or on the profile? I'm on it. I am on their profile, and then I click on account and invoice. Okay, so if they, if you've already created the invoice previously, we don't recommend going back into the invoice and editing it to post. I'm not a editing it. I'm marking. I'm just marking it paid. So you're on a invoice. You've created the invoice, correct? Right. And right. at the same time, so you're saying that this area you have to scroll. Right. Yes. What when you, I click, when I go to pay for an order. Like, isn't it the correct way to make to pay for it is to click on account and invoice and then go down to the payment, the invoice amount, and then click that right click on and cr and click on the payment. It sounds like you're taking extra steps actually. Um, what we recommend is if you open their profile, click payment and then post payment. All right, wait a minute. Let like, me do it as I'm as I'm talking to you because then I can. Well, we actually it. don't have time to completely go through it all. So that's I'm just going to show you a couple ways. So post a payment that way. Um, if you are already in an invoice and the invoice is too large, just like the other screens, you can hover your mouse at the edge and make it smaller or larger so that the invoice itself is smaller. And then these little buttons here are paid buttons, depending on how they're paying. And then the last option is if you don't have their profile open, but you have them on the, you see them on the customer list, so like Lee Avery here has an account balance, I can just click the payment button right here and post the payment here. Click either the paid button or again, this little button, choose the payment type. Oh, okay. All right. Then that's all you need to do. Can you explain the procedure of importing wholesale orders from InTouch? Yes. So the first thing that you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure that you have the credentials set up, your InTouch credentials set up in um, the program. And then once you've done that, 
you're going to click orders and all you need to do is click the import button. Now I already had an old order in here so if I wanted to get new orders um, and if this order was already imported then I would first delete it and then close and then I can click again and that's going to bring up a date range box. The date range box was introduced with Boulevard 2020 so that it's not pulling all orders for um, that are available to be imported and you can show you can specifically put the date of the order so you do a start and end date and then click OK and when you do that it's going to start the import process and then you would select the order that you want to actually import. I have a question on weekly accomplishment sheets. How do you do that in Boulevard? So the weekly accomplishment sheets are automatically, are you talking about um, importing from InTouch or are you talking about it being well, created in Boulevard when you invoice? Well, I, I do my weekly accomplishment sheets through Mary Kay InTouch each week, but I'm now noticing that on the 2020 screen that I see it says WAS and I just wanted to know does that automatically import over to Boulevard or, or how do I do that? So it's going to create the weekly accomplishment sheet for you as you create invoices and um, it, you mm -hmm. can't export it out to InTouch because that formatting is, is very different but what you can do is let's go ahead and choose preview so you can choose whether you send it um, as a file like a, a PDF to give to your director or um, and that's actually the preview if you choose file then what that's going to do is it's going to export it as a, um, a specially created XML file and if your director has Boulevard they can take that file and import it into their Boulevard and it will post oh, all of your okay. sales so um, the and the great thing about this and the reason why directors love when their consultants use Boulevard to send the weekly accomplishment sheet is because you can actually change the state range so for example if you haven't sent a weekly accomplishment sheet in a month you can change it and say okay I want to send all of June so it's showing me all of June and then you can export it in one fell swoop and then they just import it and if they're not sure how to do that if your directors never imported a weekly okay. accomplishment sheet from you they can contact us and we can help them hi this, I, I just have a quick question kind of on the weekly accomplishment sheet as well um, as I was inputting some of my sales in the last couple weeks um, I had actually um, accidentally put down that my visit wasn't on the go and I was like oh wait a minute no no that's a facial and I saw it first when it came up on the weekly accomplishment sheet but when I changed it went back to the invoice to change it to facial they would not show on the weekly accomplishment sheet the name was there but not the amount so um, you want to make sure that you have the most current version installed um, at the as far as service release because the very first version of 2020 that we released the facials and easy ship and guest checkout those amounts were not being displayed on the week of accomplishment sheet they were there they were just hidden and the newest version does show them and what you can do is if you have an easy ship guest checkout one of those that you need to add the amount for because it was you had an older version you can go ahead and type that amount into the website field or again if it was a, a facial just edit the invoice and save it and it will repopulate well I, I seem to do that I mean because I, I, I would type it in and then when I would go back like you know I wanted to preview it again then it wasn't there but you're telling me there were two versions of 2020 because I have 2021, but I'm wondering. So now. anytime we release a major version and with to so many people, there is the possibility of fixes that 
that have to occur. And so you may not have the most current version. So that's why we recommend that you make sure that you close Boulevard um, when you're not using it. And when you okay. reopen it, it will prompt you if there is a new version, a new service release to install. And it's kind of like a Windows update. It makes sure that everything is working as it should be and you have all the applied fixes to your program. I had been using a, a different program that failed me, and so uh, this is all very, very new to me, and I'm wondering if there's some kind of a tutorial that I can print off or a, a boulevard for dummies or something <laughs> like that that I can... Um... Well, first of all, you're definitely not a dummy. It is very, can be very overwhelming when you're coming from a totally different software and learning a completely new software. So we understand that. And I would absolutely suggest in your program, if you go to the help menu and either choose I'm new to Boulevard or choose help, um, that's going to send, a, send you to our support website here and we have a lot of articles here these articles can actually also be printed off with using your browser just right click and print um, any of the articles but I would definitely recommend going to the getting started section of Boulevard and as you have questions um, either come to chat if chat is open or if it's not um, shoot us an email you know click the submit a request or send us a, an email from your email program and we're pretty responsive so um, we want to make sure that the transition to Boulevard is goes smoothly and that you get a good grasp of it and also keep in mind that you can use as little or as much of Boulevard as you want there are some a lot of advanced features um, in Boulevard but there's also a lot of great basic features as well and use what you what you need to and as you are getting a good handle on Boulevard if there's something that you do in your business and you don't know how to incorporate that and, and utilize Boulevard to help you with that reach out to us and say, you know, I actually do this in my business. How do I track that in Boulevard? And we're more than happy to walk you through it, send you an email with step-by-step -step instructions, or also refer you to certain articles and videos as well. Hi, my question is about um, customer delivery service orders and how to, how to import those correctly so that you are actually not depleting your own inventory when you're filling those and creating a new invoice for your customer. Sure. Okay, so I can't show you the portion of it where you actually import from InTouch because that's their website, but um, there are instructions on our, our website on how to import. But once you have clicked the import button, what it's going to do is it's going to ask you whether it's a guest checkout or easy ship order. And let's let's just say that this was what was imported over. Now a couple things to note, um, when you import a direct ship order, whether it was initiated by you or whether the customer was registered on your website and they placed the order or it's a guest checkout, it's Boulevard's going to pull, when you import, it's going to pull the date of the original order and you would want to make sure a couple of things. You'll notice when I change this to easy ship, it added a product order tab. So you'll want to make sure that you go to this product order tab and this is where you either select that you paid for the freight on that order as well as any tax that was paid. So for example, this one is a small order so um, the tax, there's no extra section to tax, but for example, if this order customer also received a deluxe mini because they spent, met that threshold, then you would actually be charged section two's tax, and so that's uh, there so that you can track that. Now, if you charge your customer 
shipping, then you want to go ahead and enter that here into this shipping. This is shipping that is being charged to the customer, and that's so that it's handled properly for tax purposes. Now, as far as everything else, it, it's virtually the same. You choose, you know, how they paid, credit card, and you would go ahead and click OK. Now, when I choose guest checkout or easy ship it's not going to pull that inventory out off my shelf but what it is going to do is it's going to create an order and clear my filters again and you'll see that order that's the easy ship order that I just placed and that the reason why that's important is so at the end of the year when you print out your annual product um, purchases report that you have that sale factored in but and any freight that you paid but it's not going to pull the inventory from your current on hand amounts so that's, that's that's very very helpful I did notice your tax though shows up under the section 2 column on that that actual order inventory order so is that even even though you had no section 2 on that order it was just the paparazzi pink lipstick so it depends on your state and your boulevard setting as well some states charge tax on freight and so that's where that section 2 tax comes in is the tax on the freight so that's why it's put into that field I want to thank everybody for coming and joining us for this webinar. Again, if I didn't have a chance to answer your question, I apologize. I, I want to make sure that we keep the webinar to an hour, but shoot us an email, come to chat. We're more than happy to walk you through or answer any of your questions. And we hope that you'll join us for the next webinar. If you have any topics that you'd like us to make sure that we discuss in a future webinar, let us know. We're always willing to help out where we can.